Yeah, I have no idea who this is. This is Ho Math. And they literally have like levels of basic thinking. Should we check that out? Oh, that's loud AF, bro. Should we check this out and see if it's interesting? Just because like you mentioned it and I have a level system, but this seems like they're teaching us something more. Let's see. So what the hell is this all about? This video is about levels. Why did I think it was going to be a girl's voice? That's so funny. It is theoretical, which is fascinating, and it also has colorful jokes. I use this diagram a lot in my videos because it helps explain some of the wild things that people say and do. It's based on the work of several researchers. I'm trying to make it easy. Spiral Dynamics is often compared to my work that I do with the levels, but I actually, I bought the book and then I moved to Europe and I gave it away. So I haven't read the book, but uh, some of the groups I've been involved in use Spiral Dynamics as a general reference in their work, which is interesting. Um, it's like very like color based, which I think is funny. I just did numbers cause it's easier, but I don't know much about it except that it's very, it's like similar, but not similar. I don't know, but, uh, interesting. Easier to read for a wider audience. This is my interpretation of a model of consciousness that I studied. It includes quadrants, levels, lines, states, and types. Today I'm talking about levels. I want to make a big, long video explaining each level in detail, but for now I'm just going to do this short version to get it out of the way and get the ball rolling. But before we get started, here are some misspelled vegetables, because I'm told that it helps if I'm cute. Here's a cactus. So these levels are stages of psychological development. They have been studied by numerous researchers. Some of the most famous models come from Jean Piaget, here's a snapshot of his work, and Abraham Maslow, who had the hierarchy of needs. Everybody is born down here, and nearly everybody gets up to at least this stage by adulthood. Mm. There are many factors that determine how you will develop and when, including your surroundings, your choices, your culture, and the brain you were born. Love that, yes. Okay, culture system, okay. Born with. These are the quadrants. They are different ways of looking at reality. In this case, this would be your mind, your brain, your culture, and your society. They all happen at the same time because the mind is the brain and culture is a lot of minds and society is what those minds do. Okay, fire. Now I can see why people think it's related to my levels. Do. I should also say that people are never really in a level. You just slowly develop the ability to think at higher levels as you gain experience, mm. but we all use the lower levels every day. When you have to use the bathroom, for example, that's a level one process. It's mm. not a complex style of thought. It's just a feeling or an urge. So some people- Tell that to people with ADHD who forget to pee. Will make it up to higher stages and some people never do. Most people on Earth spend most of their time in these four stages, and this one is only very common in modernized places. Hmm. And it's the first stage where you can adopt a world-centered level of understanding, which means understanding how people think the way they do based on where they're from. Mm -hmm. Before that level, oh. there are right and wrong ways of thinking. So you would either be doing it right or you're not, and then they would say you're either doing it right or you're not. After that, it's... <laughs> Look at the bubble. The bubble. I can definitely see why people think this relates to my work. It's more like, well, it maybe I would think that way if I was from there, or maybe I would be more like you if I lived your life. That's where global thinking begins. Speaking of global thinking, this is my first sponsored video. It's brought- Yeah, but how is global thinking not also another bubble? I love that. But like, say, I get what he's saying though. Okay. ...to you by Atlas VPN, which allows you to access- This was posted two days ago. I'll post the video in the chat so you guys can watch it all the stuff you like from all over the globe. It feels illegal, but it's not. With Atlas VPN, you can just go, sorry, I'm totally in America right now. It's like a tiny little embassy. Atlas has the best VPN deal on the market. With the Black Friday price cut, it is $1.70 a month with six months extra for free, which also feels illegal and is not. Check the video description for the link. Atlas VPN makes you anonymous, which is a big deal for me. I do not need people knowing whose order this is. Give me the regular price, please. Atlas also stops ads and malware. It blocks malicious right? Hide from the Illumina. Want better deals on shopping and subscriptions? Sorry, you want to cover unlimited devices? You want to hide from the Illuminati? Get the Black Friday price cut. $1.70 a month, six woo, months woo. extra for free. 30-day like money-back guarantee. VPN. Protect your privacy. Other benefits. Ridiculously low price. Click the link in the video description. Interesting branding decisions. Description below. Limited time offer. I hope it's also a limited time that we stay in these lower levels of thinking. Let's talk about what they are and how they work and how to move mm -hmm. on. Before I get started, I should say that higher uh, does not always mean better. Some ah. people watch my videos where I talk about my mistakes and they say, Oh, you think you're at a high level? You sound like a jerk. But higher doesn't mean better person. It means more aware. So here's the lower- Ding, 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 ding. I really like this, going back to that conversation we had about fives earlier, right? 
Like being a five doesn't make you like, it doesn't mean it's better. It just means that it means that you're having a specific, you can't, no. It means you have access to having a specific relationship with existing and existence versus the limited way other people are able to have them, which goes back to, I think, what he was trying to show, which was like the different idea of like, you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong versus like, you're just doing it. And then the right and wrong is depending on the bubbles, right? Or level of awareness, seeing things. And then as you go higher in the levels of awareness, it becomes much more complex. You're seeing people, seeing people, seeing almost into infinity. And so when I make mistakes in here, I usually know exactly why they're happening. I usually can say things like, I choose women who probably will not stick around. Why? Because I don't think I can support them anyway. Well, why does that matter? Well, usually most of them want a higher level of support that I can provide. And why does that matter? Well, it doesn't feel good when they leave because I can't support them. Okay, well, why do those feelings matter? Can you change it some other way? Can you get a better job or something? Well, I, I literally wait, totally thought the home math was going to be a lady's voice too. I thought it was going to be home math and it was going to be like, like two plus two, like it was going to be math, but like in a way that like I could understand because I'm really bad at math. And I thought they were going to like basically explain to me math in a funny way. That's what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I tried to do that. I'm doing the best that I can. Is there some way that you can change the way you try to get money from the world? Well, I've already done everything. Yeah, this is uh, medicine says, well, this is kind of similar to what you've been saying. Okay, everyone has been telling me to look at spiral dynamics. I have not read the book on it, like I said, so I don't know about it. But my system is not, need everyone is having this lived experience in a different way. So if spiral dynamics is like the levels, great. If the hieros, Mac, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is like, great. If like, that's the problem is like, I'm not saying anything that hasn't been said. I'm just saying it in a way that's packaged to a different audience. But I also haven't read everything someone's written on it. So I, I'm looking forward to reading Spiral Dynamics once I get the book again, or maybe I'll get the audio book. Because like, yeah, this is the, the stuff I've been saying it. But I'll tell you this, as I'm listening to this, I'm realizing I might make a brand shift because this is really hard to follow unless you have a lot of understanding of what we talk about and philosophy and psychology and all the all the diagrams. And then it's just like with Verveke, when you listen to him, you have to like learn his language to translate it to your speak. People tell me that's the biggest complaint they have about my content is like, I'm trying to appeal to the, the people who didn't go to college because like I didn't go to college or the people who don't like, it doesn't matter that they went to college, I should say. I should say, but at the same time, I talk in a way because I've read so much that makes people think I've gone to college or that I, so I'm not, I'm not, it's hard to follow is what I'm trying to say. So I'm like, oh, how do I like speak in a way that's more generally accepted by people so they don't feel left out of the conversation? Because if I sent this video to a lot of people, they would feel left out of the conversation. And I don't want to leave people out of the conversation because I think all people are capable of introspection and you don't have to go to college to do it. But this is so interesting. Like as I'm watching this, I feel like I am watching like my own content, but from a different perspective. And I'm like, oh, this is like this could feel overwhelming. Everything I can hear and this kind of gets fuzzy. So why am I spending time with the wrong woman comes back to this experience that I've had over and over and over again. And I haven't been able to. Oh, I'm so sorry for the pauses. But Yaya says, are these connected to chakras? His little stick figure has a chakras, but I can't tell if it's a coincidence. I don't know yet because I don't know spiral dynamics. But I'm actually wearing like a chakra necklace today in earrings that I got at a, uh, I was at a festival or not a festival. I was at a marketplace, you know, like a pop-up marketplace. And a guy looked at me and he goes, stop. And I was like, that's me. And he was like an old man. He's like, you have to buy this and I have to give it to you. So he gave me this set. I didn't buy it. He gave it to me. And he's like, you have to wear this. This is like, I can see your chakra so strong. And he like put his head hand like over my head and he like was reading my vibes. He was so sweet. And I bought like five necklaces from him the year after because I saw him every year. But it was really cute. And I just thought that was a coincidence that you said chakras because I'm actually wearing mine right now. To fix. I don't know what they mean, by the way. Like I'm not in that bubble, but like I appreciate it. It's the ability to see through what's going on in your mind and also to see through similar levels of complexity in what's going on in the world around you. So it's not about being good. It's about mm -hmm. getting it. Yes, it's not about being good. It's about just being aware of it, which is why it doesn't dictate your views. So many people will be like, you're a five. You should like have this opinion. And I was like, girl, I'm just saying I'm seeing it. I'm not saying I know what to do about it. You feel me? Moving up in the levels does not always make you more effective. In fact, this level is mm. famous for making people into hippies. This is the point in <laughs> development where you begin to understand that everyone has their own way of seeing things. 
And so who's to say what we should and should not do? This is an illustration of an interaction from each level. This girl is getting validation from a guy that she's not interested nice. in. So she knows huh. how to get the validation and then she stands back and she can plan how to give less to get even more. Wow. And then she looks at that and asks, well, is that the right thing to do? Not really. But am I going to do it anyway in this circumstance because I think it would be better overall? So that's in order. Mm. Wanting something, knowing how to get it from someone, knowing how to control the interaction, knowing whether that's right or wrong according to the rules that you live by, and then becoming the author of your own sense of right and wrong. And then when you take another step back to this hippie level, it's like, well, who is anyone to judge my choices? My choices are right for me, and so there isn't really such a thing as right and wrong. It's just what works for me. That's why they call that level the individualist. Different people huh. go through the level. Oh my god, I love this. No wonder, literally, no wonder people were like, dude, this is like your work. I was like, oh man. Literally, people actually said, they sent me two different ones. Um, This this one and another person's work. And they're like, did you read these books? I was like, I haven't read these books yet. And again, my, what I'm so excited, right? What I'm so excited about is how all of us on the planet are having like universal experiences. You know how some people will say like, oh, these people discovered this, but these people discovered this at the same time. It's like there is no such thing as a first to me. I am not concerned with who first did anything. Christopher Columbus did not discover America. You feel me? People were here. This need for people to be first is so in the ego. I just want to know if we're sharing something, if I'm having a shared experience with people, right? That's what I want to know. I want to know, like, are you experiencing this thing too? Holy shit. Like, that's how my co-author and I ended up creating the levels. It was like, he was like, oh, hey, uh, I had this experience. And I was like, I had this experience. And I was like, shut up. And then we got together and did this together. And now he's on his own journey and I'm doing my thing. But like, it is one of those things where like, we only realized because, you know, we had both just been having this experience alone. And we were like, hey, what's this thing that we feel like we're experiencing? And boom, bada bing, bada boom, you know? Levels differently. But you know what's funny is I'll have people come to me and be like, I'm having this experience um, where I feel like I'm really discovering like, oh my God, the world thinks so uniquely. Like people be like, you know, people don't always think like you. I'm like, okay. And then people, be, and then if you have a conversation with them, they're like, people don't always think like you. Everyone's different. I'm like, yeah, like different bubbles. And they're like, yeah. But you should definitely think like me, which is like everyone is different except those people and those people and those people. They're just bad people. And I'm like, wait, if you know everyone thinks differently and everyone has their own belief system, then why are they bad? And it's like, well, because like they're not cool like me. And I'm like, OK. So again, I want to say everyone thinks differently. And then through my lens of my values, I can decide whether or not I think that's like a good or a bad thing. Not a good or a bad person, but like a good or a bad thing. But it's only through the lens of my consciousness, not through the lens of some arbitrary bubble that I've created that's big enough to encompass anyone but myself and my partner, right? And that's the dilemma is that people will have this realization of like everyone's like, oh, there are different cultures in the world. Everyone is different. But then they'll either do one of two things. They'll either say like, oh, yeah, everyone is different. But then secretly actually, okay, no, they'll do two things. Everyone is different and we should let them live, but I secretly think they're crazy. Or everyone is different and, oh my gosh, how do I convince that person to like be more like me? Or you can take the other route, which is like, I'm going to live and let live. And that's like the hippie route. Or you can go further than that and say, do I even, am I even morally allowed to intervene on people's different beliefs? Am I even allowed to intervene in some significant way. And that's the harder question to answer. And then above that, it's like, you never had a choice in the first place. You're gonna intervene if you're gonna intervene or you're not if you're not. You grappling with it is like you doing the thing. You've already made the decision. While you're pondering the decision to make, you've made it. And when I went through this one, it really stressed me out. I felt like I couldn't get my feet on the ground. I saw so many different ways of seeing the world, so many different philosophies, so many different life choices, and I didn't know how to pick one. And if I can't pick one, then I can't get anywhere. Mm. So I would say, I don't know what to do. And people would say, just pick something. And I would say, how do I know what to pick? And they would go, pick something you like. And I would go, how do I know what I like? Mm. So I really like to plan things out. I like certainty. But at this level, you, you realize that you're never going to know what happens until you try it. So it goes, what I see, what you see, what works for me, what works for us. And then, hey, hold on, certainty. But at this level, you, you realize that you're never going to know what happens until you try it. So it goes, what I see, what you see, what works for me, what works. Okay. Ooh, my needs and thoughts 
Okay, how others respond. Okay, how I get my way. Okay. Okay. It's for us. And then, hey, look, those people have a different thing that works for them. Yeah. That's level Bubbles. five when you can say, okay, <gasps> I'm like this because I'm from here and you're like that because you're from there. And then at level six, it's like, well, where I'm from is really just myself. Okay, so my bubbles are only five, or my bubbles, my levels are five levels. The one I wrote is five levels, but other people's go much higher. So obviously this one has much more. And I know a lot of people are like, Brittany, I love that. I love getting criticism from some bubbles because I'm like, oh my God, you don't even know. Like, I wonder if they would feel the same way about Spiral Dynamics or about Myers-Briggs or anything else. Like, we're just categorizing humans because that's so natural to us. But people are like, you can't just categorize people down to five levels. And I'm like, we do it with gender. We literally say there's only two genders. You just took eight billion people on the planet when you don't even know all of them and decided there's only two genders when you don't even know that yet. Like, you're just assuming that. Based off of what? Like some understanding of some science, but you don't actually know that. You haven't met all 8 billion people. You don't know if there's an anomaly. You don't know if there's different kinds of variations. You don't even know where to put intersex people. So like, again, it's so interesting to me that people like don't even understand how we do it all the time. And I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying it's a good way to start off to have the very complicated conversation. You know what I mean? Everybody is just from their self. And so how can one self have an idea that's better than any other self. Mm. Whereas at an earlier level, you might be able to say something like, well, my dad was an accountant and so I'm an accountant. That's just what we do. And you don't have to deal with any of this uncertainty. So Yeah, so he's explaining, you're right. Alice says, oh, I feel like he's describing the process of establishing your own values and finding your joy, like the foreness of feeling like if nothing matters, then how do I choose a path or have opinions? Yeah, so right now in my level system, this is like what I'd probably call a four. It sounds like he's already popped all the bubbles in a very like, a uh, specific way that he's already um, in this stage of life, like discovered people live differently and they're all in bubbles. And that like, n I don't know if he's saying nothing matters or everything is a construct, but I think that is what the message is, right? Because that's why the four stage can be so shocking is like, are we just doing stuff because we've decided that's what we're going to do? Is there literally no reason we do stuff? Everything from the way we have relationships to war to every way we treat people to jail and prisons and taxes and roads. Like, are we just doing it because like we like our ancestors were like, eh, this is good enough. And then this is good enough. And this is good enough. And like, we're doing it right now. We're like, eh, this is good enough. And this is good enough. And but like everything is a construct. Like we just made it up because there's some version, depending on the bubble you're born into that tells you there's some version of the story in which people very in great confidence tell you, oh, don't worry, there's a plan. God has it. Don't worry, there's a plan. Like nature has it. Don't worry, there's a plan. There is no plan. There is no plan. There's only the plan the human beings made. That's who, that's the plan. And when you realize that, you're like, I made the plan? Because like when you give it to God or give it to nature, you're giving it to something so big and outside of yourself. You're like, oh, wait, I don't have to trust myself because somebody else has the plan. No, girl, you have the plan. We have the plan. They have the plan. But it's still just humans who have the plan. And the plan shifts and changes based off of everybody's mood and their period cycle. And that's just the reality. That's just the reality. Case says gender or sex. Well, depending on the bubble you're talking to, for some bubbles, gender and sex are the same thing. So if you're talking to the two gender bubble, gender and sex are the same thing and there's only two. Right. If you're talking to Brittany, there's two sexes or variations of sex and then there's like thousands of genders. So oh, higher is more complex, but complex is not always good. The mm. way I explain it is that you can have a really good shoe or a really bad car. Mm. And I think what I have is a sinking cruise ship. So if higher is not always better, then why should we grow? Well, because higher is usually better. Ooh, the should part is a negatory for me. But also, uh, higher could be better. Going back to Yaya, our conversation earlier, growing could be better. And I don't like this prescription model, though I could change my content. Guys, should I experiment for the next year and make prescriptions on people to be better and to be introspective? And then I can unalive myself at the end because I'm so stressed from it. It is so stressful to dedicate your life to convincing people who don't want to listen to you that you should become something that might not bring them joy. Because again, you are making the assumption that going to a higher level would bring people joy, which I just disagree is the answer. I just based off of my work and what I've done, 
You have to want and need to go up levels. Otherwise, your joy could be found at two and there'd be no reason to become a five. Like zero reason. Becoming a five might actually make you unalive yourself, which is not your joy. So again, like unalive, not chosen death. So again, right? Like that's that's the problem, okay? So again, I could go for the next year and pretend like I'm gonna make a prescription. But it's it's a bad it's bad advice to tell people, in my opinion, from my research and what I've done, very anecdotally, to be something they don't want to be. It's like you're torturing them. Do you want to torture people to be introspective? And then what? When they were never meant to be in that journey, they're not meant to be on it. They're either meant to be on it or they're not. You know, let's see what he says, though. If everyone was at these lower levels, we would not be able to have grocery stores and electricity. So we have a complex. So. What? So? Complex world and it requires complex thinking. And some problems cannot be solved at the level they came from. Everybody define requires. Watching this is going to have a different fingerprint of development. That means that your different lines or capacities or the ways that you use your intelligence are all going to be developed to different levels. Ooh, very brave new world right here. It's possible to be very lopsided. For example, you could have your cognitive line all the way up at nine, but your moral line all the way down at three. You could also be higher up than another person overall, but they're still way better than you at a particular thing. Nice. For example, this could be somebody who really understands history and politics to a high degree mm -hmm, but has mm -hmm. low empathy and this would be someone who kind of gets it but is great with people yeah, so as yeah, i go yeah. through them one by one try to remember where you went through them and what that felt like and where you think you are now okay level one i call this survive because it's just basic moment to moment what do i need do i need food do i need sleep it's just my own feelings and there's no such thing as someone else's mind if we were living in this level, we would be in small survival bands, and we would not be thinking much about each other's thoughts. We would be doing what we must in order to survive. Level two I called connect, because now you can think about what is in someone else's mind. What does this person want or need? Mm. Primitive people at this level will sometimes do rain dances or throw virgins in a volcano. I'm not sure if that's real, but it's the kind of thing you'd expect to see, because at level two, you're realizing, okay, I have a mind and I need things and other people have minds and they need things. So maybe it's not raining because we haven't pleased someone in the sky. Interesting. On my level system, I think babies are twos because I refer to, this is an introspection system to be fair, not like, so my levels, if you guys remember or don't know, is like two is everyone is doing like they're best with what they have. So like a baby would be a two because a baby is doing the best with what they have. And that's that natural just baby state. If you guys have ever been around a baby or like known about a baby, a baby isn't having like internal thoughts necessarily that we're aware of until a certain time, but they know they need to eat. They know they're in pain. They know enough, right? So they might not be as aware, though there is an awareness to babies. Like babies are aware they have a consciousness. It's just like a subjective awareness. But they're still twos in my mind because they're doing the best with what they have. And one's introspection is so low because regardless of what they have and what they need, they won't eat the cupcake, right? Let's spam that cupcake emoji in chat. Ones on my list are people who don't are like, let's say, walking through the desert and they're starving and someone goes, here's a cupcake. And they go, mm, no, that's I can't eat that. And you're like, what? Just eat the cupcake. It's right here. And they're like, mm, no, 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 not that. I can't have that. They're like not introspective enough to even. Inv and again, my introspection levels are different. It's past the basics of eating and sleeping. It's about are you aware of your own caution consciousness in the world? Ones can't even eat the cupcake, whatever that represents, knowledge, introspection, investing in themselves or their community. Because there's some choice they're making and not eating it, right? Because even a an like a, a a person at the most his level one would eat the cupcake. That's why ones are so fascinating on my introspection level. Because even on his level of what a one is, they would eat the cupcake. Because they'd be like, "Ooh, I need to eat." My ones wouldn't eat the cupcake. They wouldn't. They wouldn't eat it. They'd be like, mm, "No." And that's why they're so unique to me because I'm like, why wouldn't you eat the cupcake? It's right there. And again, I'm using kind of a, met a metaphor here, but that's interesting. And then twos are people that are just like, yep, they're born into bubbles, live in bubbles, they chill. They're just like doing what they need to do. You know what I mean? Um, and it's like they can do the basics of whatever that means within their bubble, but then there's like a little bit of a spectrum there, you know?
Maybe the volcano is angry because it wants something. And what do I want? Virgins. So level two <laughs> is all about what... <laughs> what do I want? Virgins. I do <laughs> affects what other people think about me and what they do for me. Basically, like this. If we were living at level two, we would be in small tribal groups. And we would be focused on safety mm. and security and maintaining functional habits and dependable practices just day to day. Level three, I called control. This level is still interesting, 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 because even ones know there's like a community. They just struggle with it to an extent. Very popular in modern society. So at level one, I My have bad. a mind with feelings and needs. And at level two, I know that other people have minds with feelings and needs. And sometimes maybe I think a volcano does too. And at level three, now I know that other people are aware that other... Mm, I would say ones know they're an individual, but they don't know how to be within society but they can they usually know how to be within society by like latching on how do they do it usually by surviving from what i've seen but barely they don't do it very well no they don't do it they really suck at it hmm that's interesting actually one's interesting other okay, okay. people are aware that they have feelings and needs so i know that these people have a relationship to each other the same way that i have a relationship to this and to this and to this and to this, now I know he has a relationship to her. So instead of just direct connections, this creates social situations. Here is a woman seeing man bad on her phone, and then she sees the man in her life and goes, oh, wait a minute, if man bad, then maybe that man bad. Mm -hmm. And then at level three, you would step back and say, well, what do I do about this situation? Why is, why is he being bad, and what can I do about this relationship? Mm -hmm. If we were living at this level, we would be living in something like the Roman Empire, a mythic, feudal, and exploitative empire. You see this level a lot in things. I would argue that twos can do this within their level. So my introspection system, so it's different. I'm just comparing it since we're here, obviously. So I would argue that in my my journey of introspection, I've noticed that twos are more than capable of doing this. They can pull themselves out of their own ass to be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't judge all men the same or all women the same, right? That's not the problem, which is why, again, my introspective system is like about yourself in relation to the macro. So micro and macro, like the universe, which is why I still think my updated levels video is so good. So if you guys want to see it, links in the description, but it is such a good example of like, you can face yourself. You can realize your prejudice and bias. You can do all these things as a two. You can find joy as a two. You can be a very good person as a two, all that stuff, right? You can be quite introspection, introspective as a two. There's even sort of like these like enlightened twos, like people who have a real relationship with things, right? But again, at the same time, they're not having the other relationship, which is like their consciousness between the world, which is what I'm waiting him, I'm waiting for him to get to, right? So I think twos are more than capable of all of this, like to realize other people exist, to realize they're having relationships with them, to realize all of these things, you know? Things like the mafia and in sports teams, firemen, police, military. So even though these levels to... Sorry, just a reminder that he's still explaining spiral dynamics to us. ...we involve thinking about thinking, it's mostly just for the purpose of getting what you want and having power over others. Mm. Level four, I called belong because the primary drive... Right? These are... He's... The, he's explaining spiral dynamics to us right now, right, guys? Right? Wait, the diagram I made? Wait, is this his diagram? Wait, is this his thing or is this spiral dynamics? But he didn't make spiral dynamics. Isn't spiral dynamics like a whole thing? Now I'm very confused. Wait, he's saying this video explains the diagram I made, what it's for and how it works and how to read it. I should talk to him. I'll call him. As well as each level, how it works and how you see yourself in the world. It's my personal interpretation of a model of consciousness that I studied, but it's rewritten to make it more understandable to a bigger audience. Okay, so it is about spiral dynamics, but he's explaining it his own way. Got it. Drive is to fit in. And that drive is motivated by what they call second person perspective. So again, at level one, you have your own feelings, urges, and needs. At level two, you see those of others and you can react to them. But it's still all about what those feelings mean to you. And at level three, you understand that you're in a complex social web of relationships and you can react to those relationships and exert control over your situation. And at level four, that's when you realize everyone is in their own situation. That's where we get the classic folk wisdom of don't judge somebody until you've walked a mile in his shoes. You are in this situation over here, but imagine if you were him in this situation over here. 
maybe you would have done what he did too. That doesn't come online until you get the second person perspective at level 4. When level 4 was brand new, it was basically medieval empires, it says mythic empires here, nation states, basically large groups of people that lived by a set of rules that they shared, as opposed to the do what you want mentality of level 3. Level 4 focuses... Interesting, so he's even putting levels to like culture. This is on good versus evil. The entry to that level is called the diplomat because of the way that they focus on acceptable behavior and social norms. That's their way of getting over the problems from the previous stage. You can tell when second person perspective is coming online in children because they start looking in the mirror more. They start to realize, oh, I have other people looking at me the way that I look at other people and I have feelings about them. They're looking at me and having feelings about me, so I better be up to their expectations. Level 4 is the beginning of what we traditionally refer to as morality. Here again is the woman seeing man bad on her phone, and then she feels like, well, maybe this man is bad because my phone said so. She's projecting that onto him, having a, a negative experience, and then deciding what to do about it. I'm gonna break up with this guy. He must be bad because... I felt like it was true when I saw it on my phone. And then out here, she takes a step back and looks at herself as if she is a second person, which is why they call it second person perspective, and thinks, is that the right thing to do? This is the first point where it becomes obvious that consciousness is important, because a lot of people see things on their phones or on TV, and it gives them a feeling, and then they see that feeling coming from others, and then they do something about that relationship. So they might begin treating somebody poorly because they saw something on their phone that made them feel like, well, if that's happening here, it must be happening here too. And it's not until you slow down enough to get to level four that you can take a step back and ask yourself, is this a valuable process? The way that level... Uh, fun fact, Ingrid, the Roman Empire was obviously more socially developed than most societies during the Middle Ages. Um, I feel like he's generalizing. Like, I think he's applying it to culture correctly with his own work. Like, I don't see it being an issue. I feel like it's making sense to me. But fun fact, there are Roman ruins here in the town I live in. Because Croatia is full of Roman ruins, like, in roads. And, like, one of the first roads goes through Croatia. And, like, I'm just, like, living in history over here, girls. Level 4 typically functions is through conformity and agreement. I believe this is the wrong way to behave. I believe this is the wrong way to behave. Agreeing on what's right and wrong and creating a set of rules and following them can solve some of these earlier problems, but also there are an infinite number of ways to decide what is right and wrong. You can have this set of rules over here or this set of rules over here, and that's where level five comes in. Level five introduces objective observation as a value. Basically, okay, you guys think A, B, C is right, and you guys think X, Y, Z is right. Well, let's figure out which one is better. And in order to do that, you have to take another step back into a third person perspective. So again, the first three levels are all about me. And then level four is if I was another person in my culture, how would I view my behavior? And then level five is another step back. If I was an alien or a stranger, how would I view my culture? This also enables you to view other cultures and sets of social norms. That's why it's global. It's the first time that you can go, oh, I get why they're like that, because mm -hmm. they're from somewhere else. Level 5 has only really been around for a few hundred years, and it is basically where we mm -hmm. get science and the assembly line and other forms of... Uh, okay. That's where we're deviating. Uh, what? Hold on. <laughs> Wait. Is he making an argument? No, he's saying, he's not saying literally as if introspection in the relationship we're having with our consciousness has always like evolved as the way that we think of civilization. It's not like, a relationship to our consciousness has only existed in the last 500 years, right? Like our ancestors were definitely aware of their consciousness and having like a very introspective relationship with it. Does he think, ah, is he a white elitist man? I'm just kidding. I'm racist. But like, is that what's happening? Because that's not what he, that can't be what he's saying, right? Like we're going to rewind that. They're from somewhere else. Level five has only really been around for a few hundred years and it is. Oh, he is. Oh, he's not. Capitalist democracies, market-driven. Okay, so, okay, so he's 
Ooh, this would be, ooh, I wouldn't, okay. My levels of introspection are so about the individual consciousness. You could play the levels with countries because sometimes I do that. Like, oh, this country is like so this. And okay, Ingrid, yes, I get you now. Now you understand why he's pissing me off. Okay, now I'm getting it. Spiral dynamics applies to culture too. Okay, I'm uh this okay this five is a relationship of introspection with self but a five in the way it expands the outside so it aids extrospection maybe like i understand um, he's using a historical context to relate to the individual it seems he sounds very eurocentric to me yeah, I'm not sure what he's doing. Maybe it's both. He's relating to the individual consciousness, but then relating it to the culture. And I hope he's not saying that individuals throughout cultures didn't have access to this until their culture did. I wonder if he's also saying, because like, again, I look at certain cultures, I'm like, oh, this whole culture is like a two or, oh, they kind of have like a one as a country. They're kind of useless. And like, oh, this country is like, but I don't mean it like, I mean it like in a very general way. But is he saying that? But is he separating them? Because- Obviously, my work has to do with the individual consciousness, which individuals throughout history for thousands of years have had these relationships um, with their consciousness. So, hmm, well, let's keep watching, I guess. Is basically where we get science and the assembly line and other forms of modern conveniences. Level six is where things get really fun. You might remember how it went mm. for me. Level five is into objective observation, but level six recognizes the role of the perceiver. A different perceiver is gonna equal a different perception. That brings in the fourth person perspective. So down at one, you have me and my needs, the way I relate to others and the way I get my way in my social situation. And then you take a step back. What does my behavior look to others around me? And what rules do we make about that? And then another step back, what would our set of rules look like to a different group of people? And then level six, you step back again and well, the way that you are looking is going to determine what it looks like. So when, when you look here, you'll see one thing. And when you look here, you'll see another thing. And when you look here, you'll see a third thing because of who you are and where you came from. So there isn't really any way to objectively observe. Okay. Not being able to objectively observe can feel weird. Level six is very new. There were a few philosophers talking at that level in the 1800s but it didn't really show up in mainstream society until 1960s America. So because the way that you're looking determines what you're going to see, that means there are multiple perspectives that are valid because we all have a unique personal subjective reality that's not observable to others. Basically, how do I know that the red that I see is the same as the red that you see? Maybe my red is your green. From the fourth person perspective, there's no way to know. Level six is a really good example of why higher development is not always necessarily better. It is a very high degree of moral development, recognizing the validity of everyone's perspective. But let's say, for example, that there's a problem going on down here. Let's say that this guy did something that is considered morally wrong in this culture. But wait a minute, he okay. says, that's how we do it where I'm from. Okay, so... That's interesting because that's bubbles. So that's like, okay. So that's like he's describing bubbles and he's getting, okay. See, I can't, like I needed five levels so I could follow along. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I think it makes sense in a way. I would not say the five did only exist 500 years ago like Spiral Dynamics does, but more like there are more fives these days than 2,000 years ago. Disagree. Disagree. Y'all are, like, people underestimate our ancestors have absolutely been working with these models way longer than us with a more intimate relationship with them. It's just, like, it dismissed by, like, like people were saying, Eurocentric bullshit, like, academia. And people who think, like, formalized school is, like, the way to have a relationship with the consciousness. Many spiritual tribes, many spiritual, like, ancient civilizations have absolutely had the relationship that I'm describing, at least in my levels, that I think um, are about introspection, which he's kind of explaining in his own way. Like right now he's on bubbles, but bubbles are like when a three discovers like, oh, not only do people radically think differently from me, I mean, they literally have a different relationship with reality. And the question is like, do I want to bubble hop to see like how far I can take this line of thinking? Because if we're all 
radically having a different perception. Can I get to a perception that doesn't even have a connection to what I'm only observing myself that I can have a relationship with sort of like an understanding of myself within the macro and micro. And so then he gets to this point now where like people are realizing like, oh, there's bubbles and like what's right for me isn't right for you. And look at how these people do it everywhere, right? So he's explaining that now. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say there's more fives now than there were before. Like I wouldn't know that. There could have been the same amount or less or more. You know what I mean? So interesting. You know, oh, that's interesting. Like a thousand years ago, people were more in survival mode. Therefore, most people were level halves. Guys, a thousand years ago was modern history. Jesus was 2,000 years ago. They had whole civilizations. What are we talking about a thousand years ago? Oh, 10,000 years ago. My bad. <laughs> My bad. I read, I read a thousand years ago. Okay, 10,000 years ago. Okay, yes. But, but we don't know. We, because there's such lost history of the world, we don't know what past civilizations knew. We do not know that. We are making huge assumptions on very many. There's got to, because there is a point between, well, we don't even know how we got here, first of all. So I don't want to make that assumption of our ancestors when our ancestors could have already known all this. You know, I feel, see, this is where I don't know. We make up this, like we make up large history of how humans got here. We don't know that, right? So I'm, I'm very like hesitant to like, uh, uh. but wouldn't being in survival mode take you out of the system of introspection and a proposed a system, uh, level system? Yes, obviously being in survival mode can block you from being introspective, but there is a point in which you're always in survival mode until you're not. And you get out of that survival mode and into living mode by being introspective. So they have to overlap at some point. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like at some point they have to overlap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Ooh, just to play devil's advocate, how would you look at the macro if you didn't know the world existed like that way back when? Well, why wouldn't they know, right? If you have a relationship with your consciousness and you live in a village and you've never left that village, Yes, you wouldn't be able to pop cultural bubbles in a sense, but if you went into if you were in that village and you went out a hundred feet to see a different forest and you were like, oh, this forest here is different than this forest here, that could be a bubble pop opportunity. Oh, the animals here are different than the animals here. Oh, like does that mean I'm different? Oh, I've noticed that this baby looks slightly different than this baby. Oh, I've noticed that some people's shoulders are like this and some people's shoulders are like that. Well, if we all have different shoulders, are we all have different, you know what I mean? Like you can be introspective using whatever tools you're given. You know what I mean? So I think that when I look at like really old ancient civilizations, I always recognize, I also recognize that they're popping bubbles with nature more than we are. We're usually popping bubbles with culture or personal like relationships with other people or the internet or we have access to technology. When I think of ancient civilizations and I think of how they were popping bubbles, I'm assuming they're using the world, the actual planet around them to be like, what is this relationship a bee is having with this flower or like an animal is having with me or there's so many bubble opportunities. That's why I say my favorite bubble is the nature bubble because the nature bubble grounds me back into the earth. It's why I value it so much because that is where I think we all come from and where we should all end up, right? We come from the earth and go back to the earth. So that's how I would think about it. What do you guys think about that? So when level six goes crazy, they start saying things like, we can't make this guy follow these rules just because he's here. He has these rules where he's from. And, and who are you to judge which set of rules is better? We should recognize everybody's unique perspective. And that can and often does give people the idea, I guess I can just do whatever I want because who are you to judge? That's why we have problems like this. And yeah, some of these people are unfortunate, and that's sad, but- Whoa. Oh, what's he about to say? Hey, I grew up there. That's the Angel Stadium. Is this Orange County? I grew up there. Is that the Angel? I've been there for baseball games. Ooh, what is he about to say, girl? Some of them are just doing whatever they want, and we now have laws that don't distinguish between them because who are you to judge? So at this point- Did he just make a judgment on the there homeless? There is this- what 
but some have problems like I can just do whatever I want because who are you to judge? That's why we have problems like this. And yeah, some of these people are unfortunate, and that's sad, but some of them are just doing whatever they want, and we now have laws that don't distinguish between them because who are you to judge? Ooh! Mm. Hmm. So, hmm, okay. Is he saying uh, what I, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm hearing a little bit of bias come in <laughs> about our homeless population issues. Um, what do you guys think about that? Like, uh, <laughs> that, that definitely felt uh, like a personal example in a weird way in a bit like I don't know if that I loved that energy but I okay like yes and so yeah mm, yeah it felt like a jump yeah what a jump it felt like a huge like <laughs> it felt like a personal micro example of a bubble like homelessness is its own bubble and they have their own problems and that bubble overlaps with a lot of people's bubbles but like in my opinion, and this is how I view people who, again, act so out of turn of their own self-interest is like I usually assume it's mental health or some sort of health crisis. So I assume the homeless crisis is a health crisis because I don't think most homeless people are choosing to be there. Like I, it's not the same, right? Like choosing to be homeless takes a very specific mindset for it to be a real choice other than a choice you think you have to make because – you somehow have limited resources. Like, just think about what it would take for you and I to actually be homeless for real, real. Because I've never lived in a tent on the side of the road, girls. Like, I have in a middle class way, which is different. I have in a fun, let's go camping, live in my car way, that's different. I have never not known how to integrate myself back into society the moment I needed an apartment or needed to like rent a house. Like I know how to integrate myself very quickly back into society and I have enough resources to go to therapy. I have resources in my family to do this. To be homeless, to literally be on the streets would mean something went terribly wrong. It's a huge crisis of mental health in my opinion or some sort of illness that we're not seeing in the world. You know what I mean? And then on top of that, of course, there's like the layer of it that is like economic, right? Which is like a big part of it as well. Um, that's affecting part of the populace. So interesting that he brought that up randomly because I I view homelessness as like a symptom of the conditions in which human beings find themselves in a society. Not I don't put homelessness in the category of necessarily minus the few homeless people that make the choice, whatever that means, right? I don't see that as like, oh, live and let live. I see that as like, we have a symptom and a crisis. We should do something about this and help people. But he saw it. I think that was his bias showing, right? That he thinks, hmm, okay, okay, let's just, okay, yeah, okay, uh-huh. It sounds like he's generalizing homeless people while saying there's no legal way to distinguish types of homeless people. Yeah, it's interesting. You know? Ah, hmm. So at this point, there is this white break in the chart, and that's because we are moving up to second tier consciousness. And what that means is that level seven is the first level that can understand and include all the previous ones. At level six, they still insist that they're correct and no one else is. For example, at level four, you might have a Christian church and a Muslim mosque next door arguing over who has the true faith. But at level six, we can all get along. We just need more understanding when that's not what either of those groups wants. So even if level six says that they're about equality, they're saying we all need to be equal even if we don't want to. And it's not until level seven that we understand how to actually give each previous level what it wants to have so that they can live in harmony. At level seven, this fourth person perspective gets expanded through time, which creates awareness of the self as a history of your own experience. At level six, everyone has their own view, and so who's to say who's right and who's wrong? But at level seven, you take yet another step back and you realize that that unique view didn't come from nowhere, it developed over time, and everybody else is developing over time. So at level six, because we are all the same, everybody belongs wherever. But at level seven, since we know we all change over time, people belong where they fit the best. So for example, does this behavior fit here? If not, then it has to go where it belongs. And if it does, then we can all learn something new from it. 
That's why I called it Harmonize, because it's no longer about radical inclusiveness. It's about recognizing interrelated systems and how they are either synergistic or clashing. Radical relativism and radical inclusiveness, they sound nice, but they do create a lot of clashing. People who are at why does he keep showing the homeless? At level 7 tend to naturally recognize development without studying this chart or any of the stuff it came from. And it's pretty fun to see. I asked one of my life coaching clients a question, and he said, well, a little while ago, I would have answered it like this. And Does he do calls with people? Does he have a coaching? Should I sign up for his coaching business? Does he have one? That would be dishonest. It would be weird because I'm a YouTuber. Before then, I would have even answered it like that. And maybe a few years ago, I would have answered it like this. But now, and so he told me all about his development through the levels as his answer to the question. As far as I know, there is not yet any large collection of people at level 7. You can find a lot of these people in San Francisco, and you can find a lot of these people in New York, and you can find a lot of these people in Alabama, and so on. <laughs> oh, he just... Talk shit on conservatives, bro. So let me know if you think he talks mad shit just now. That you're up at this level. I'm <laughs> trying to. <laughs> oh yeah, versus I think they're all the same. <laughs> I think all twos are twos are twos, but like he just like put full to conservatives at the lower base thinking than liberals. But I think they're all the same. That's so funny. Build a time army so we can all get together and work on all this from up here. And I'm not really sure if these numbers oh, are accurate. Fuck, I, I get more guy. confident the lower it goes. But I know I enjoy meeting them because their ability to naturally balance <sighs> and synergize things and put everything where it belongs means that uh, they're going to be instrumental in solving a lot of the problems caused by the previous levels. The levels get more difficult to explain the higher they go. You may have noticed there's a lot of words here. And level 8 is pretty rare. I don't meet a lot of people who are stably at it, and even when I do, I don't think they spend a lot of their time there. So level 8 appears when you take another step back from this, and we are now witnessing ourselves change over time in the moment. As you behave, as you think and feel, new parts of you emerge from the ether. That's what it means to be construct aware. It means that you're Deep psychological processes, rule over universal principles, identifies as the story that the self tells itself about itself, using its experiences as words or chapters, aware of how intentions attempt to manifest themselves through the self as history, able to consciously witness interplay of awareness in oneself, including to thought, emotion, sensation, impulse, memory, desire, focus on responsibility uh, for own awareness and on transformation of self and, and of system as participation in systems, see multiple histories interacting within and outside the self as elements of a globally unfolding reality. Um... Man, okay, I got to contact this homie because, like, we're talking about different things but also the same thing. But, like, we're totally different. The way he talks is interesting. I still don't understand his hang-up on the homeless, which is pretty funny. Watching your own mind construct itself as you go. So at level 8, you can oh, see all bad, these different parts of yourself kind of coming out to play. For example, you could look at an image of a donut or a donut sitting on a plate and Ooh, you can go, Ooh, I want a donut. Oh, hmm. I'm feeling many things right now. I'm feeling hunger for the donut because it's good. But oh my God, Tandra, you said you came from the same video. Shut up. We are, this video, we're kind of like tearing this up though. He is complicating it. Well, the reason I only have five levels of introspection is because I do think like you, you will complicate it and you don't need to do that. But I also think that it's interesting to do it in discourse. I will say that he's, I don't know if we're exactly talking about the same things all like through and through, but it, it will be, that's why I should talk to him so we can have an actual conversation and be like, what are you doing, bro? Because it would be interesting. But I'm also feeling a sense of guilt from one time that I ate a whole box of donuts that were not meant for me. And then somebody gave me social punishment and shame for that. And I also got a stomach ache because I ate too many. I'm recalling that memory as I look at this, and it's influencing what I want to do. So now that I'm aware of all that going on in me, do I want to listen to it or not? Do I want to be the kind of person who just has a donut anyway because I'm an adult and I can do what I want? And it might sound silly when you're talking about donuts, but imagine that this is something like global politics. 
or even an interpersonal relationship. Like, yeah, I saw this on my phone and it gave me a feeling, and I'm aware of where that feeling is in myself, and I'm aware that I'm projecting it onto this person, and I'm aware of my impulse for what I should do about it, and I'm aware of what my culture says I should do about it. Mm -hmm. And then all of that is wrapped up in objective observation and what is objective the story of who i am and how i got here over time and how mm -hmm. i'm viewing the event because of my personal history do you see how that gives you a lot more power to mm -hmm. change your behavior in situations like this imagine if more people could see something and then see their own reaction to it instead of just reacting and then know where that reaction comes from in terms of their history and their culture Think how much more power that would give us not to just react in the moment. That's why you should be thinking about thinking. Anyway, level 9 is very hard to describe. Yeah, I would call that like evoking free will by not thinking in the moment. But I, that's why I think everyone can do it. I don't think you have to be a higher level to evoke free will. I think you can be a 2 and evoke free will by recognizing where you are in the moment because you're introspecting and I think everyone can introspect. I just think some people choose not to, which is like what I would say is a 1 and then people who introspect but on a lower level would be like a 2 a C and then a 2B and then a 2A and then there's like a relationship of introspecting and extrospecting with the micro and macro. So I would say that he's is he saying that only the higher levels can introspect in the moment because obviously like people do that literally in front of me all the time. They just do it at a two level which is specifically for the moment. I really value the moment like the moment in time and I tell people you just did it now do that more often and do this more often and do this more often with everything you do. So like when you discovered this is like someone's been lying to you okay. Like let's say a media person's been lying to you and like trying to like pull the wool over your eyes. Cool. So now understand that it's not a conspiracy theory that some people will trick you in order to get your money. That's just human. So recognize like who is trying to trick you and who's just trying to make money, right? Cause some people aren't trying to trick anyone. Someone just wants to make money and go home and like kick up their feet, right? Try to work with people who don't want to trick you so much as they just want to make money. The sin isn't making money. The sin, the sin is in the trick, right? And so I think his implication, at least for me, what I've seen is that the reason I don't think people should hire up on levels is because I think twos do pretty fine. The whole world's been run on twos and the world gets better and the macro, not the macro of the universe, but the macro view lens of society has always gotten better over time. So like I have a lot of faith in twos to get better over time, right? Like we, they always have, like we literally always have, right? We've gotten better over time. So I'm not worried about that. Obviously, twos are going at a slower pace because like there's only so much introspection happening, but obviously they also have to go on their journey, which I think is sort of determined for them and evoking the free will and switching the journey or expediting the journey is also up to them, but also up to like where they are in the journey. So I don't know if he's literally saying that you can only practice living in the moment and being in the present and evoking free will as a nine or eight or something, but in my level system of introspection, I think you absolutely can do this as like a two in a moment of time. I do think that I spend some time up at this level and the way that it feels to me is like all I'm doing ever is watching and wishing and that's all I've ever been doing. At these first three levels you are the main character and at level four you understand everyone is their own main character mm. and then you understand that everyone's watching a different show because everyone is a different show Mm -hmm. And that show is constantly evolving and changing over time. And at level eight, you're just watching the show happen. You're not mm -hmm. even identified with being the show anymore. You're just... Oh, hold on. It's at, a, it's at the moment, but every time you're thinking the details of all the factors, such as culture, history, your past experience, your development, every single factor individually. But I'm more... But I'm like, where's the mindfulness on that? Yeah, it's like, I could see that being more of a five lens than a two lens because a two might just be thinking about them and them versus a five would be thinking about the person they're talking to and themselves. But then people, it's very hard to know. I would have to ask him exactly what he means by this. Watching yourself be. So when my mind is... Also, it's very confusing because I have a number system and he has a number system. So now we're like, which, you know... Up here, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm seeing myself, seeing my history and where I came from and what I'm like and what I do, which is made of all this stuff, all the memories and habits from the lower levels. I'm, I'm watching myself, observing my emergence over time, interacting with the present moment. I know where I'm from and what that has made me like, and I know what's happening now, and I'm watching them come together, and I'm, I'm looking at myself looking at that. 
And so wh how you do the looking is what's important at this level. It's like what... Discourse says, would you say uh, these levels are how I view and interact with the structure of existing? Do you mean existence? Well, your levels are more beyond the existing structure and how does my consciousness inter interact and view existence? Oh, okay, hold on. Would you say these levels, these, his, are how I view and interact with the structure of existing yourself? Well, your levels are more beyond the existing structure and and how does my consciousness interact with and view existence trying to borrow your terms but i might be tripping well i feel like i'm not sure how far he's going so so far i'm not seeing the macro just yet though i think this might be the explanation of it so i'm not sure if he's explained five yet but i think this might be his five on my scale i think but i'm not sure because he is very much talking about culture and society and humans but he hasn't mentioned much outside of it. That's why when he brought up the homeless thing, that felt like, oh, that's very bubble of you. Why'd you bring that up? Like that felt like a weird example to use, but maybe it coincides with everything else. And I'm trying to figure it out. Also, I, maybe I just understand why he used that example. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Uh, would you ever make a video critiquing your own work rigorous, rigorously? Um, well how would I do that? Right? Like my work is in motion and it's not written down because it's in flux and I'm still adding to it because I'm in the research phase of my life. Right? So critiquing it wouldn't make too much sense because it's, I mean, critiquing it makes sense for updating it, but how would I make that into a video? I could critique how I say things like, oh, I've gotten better at explaining my ideas, but I can't critique the work yet because the work still is showing to be accurate or promising to certain bubbles or certain people how would i do that but are you looking at i i think you need to be looking at at this part right now i think you need to be looking mm. at this function in your life maybe you're you're looking from okay. here when you should be looking from here okay it's almost like he's saying you can move out which is great and you can scope which how to observe the moment in real time. Okay, dope. So it's like what I'm watching is watching itself. And again, here you would be watching your personal needs and mm -hmm. here you would be watching the reactions of others. And here you would be watching your situation that you're in. And here you would be watching what others expect from you. Mm -hmm. And here you would be watching observable reality. And here you'd be watching where you're from mm -hmm. to know how you interpret things. And here you'd be watching what are all your habits and pieces of you put together and how are they interpreting your reality. And here you'd be watching those habits and pieces coming together in the moment and sometimes being surprised by what they do. And then here I feel a responsibility for knowing where to watch those things, if that makes any sense. So yeah, that's this chart and how it works, the levels huh. part of it anyway. The rest of it I'll get into another time. And if you want to move up the levels, the best way to do that is just sit with your thoughts and think about them and figure out where they come from. Here's another example of what that looks like. So sometimes I worry that my little scribbly drawings are kind of embarrassing to show to 200,000 people. So why am I feeling the embarrassment? Well, I guess I'm worried that it's going to have some kind of a negative impact on me. What kind of negative impact would it have? Well, I guess maybe people would not like my channel or might say some bad things about me because I don't have uh, more sophisticated graphic processes. Well, why would it be so bad if that happened? Well, then I might lose out on opportunities that I could otherwise have if I had better looking graphics. Well, how do you know you would lose out on those opportunities? Hmm. That's a good question because so far I've been doing pretty good with my scribbly whatever this is. So then if you don't have any evidence that you're going to lose out on opportunities because you're doing this, then what's wrong with it? Okay, I guess problem solved. I can do this for now. And that's why I called this level complete. All right, I hope you enjoyed this presentation on levels. I will do another one that's going to be really excruciatingly long at some point, but I'll make it fun. And... um. Uh, video's done. You can close. You can go away if you want. I'm just going to ramble for a minute. I'm going to do a longer thing on levels somewhere down the road. Very soon I'm going to do self-maximize. It's going to be about how to make yourself the best possible partner so people like you and then want to keep you. 
I'm going to be talking about itemized delusion. Huh. I'm going to break people up into groups. And okay, okay, okay. So I will say that, okay, so his work sounds like what I did in therapy for DBT, <laughs> which is ironic, right? Like, yes, when you, when you go to therapy and you do like CBT or DBT, you, well, I don't know about CBT, Rick, because I didn't do that, but you basically wonder why you're having the thought, you examine the thought and you relate it right to the proper emotion and then you go on from there. But what I, what I would argue my work does is it like, okay, so that's you, your consciousness, but how you think. And then why you think is the next step of introspection. So I would say on my level system of one through five, I'm explaining the level, the relationship you're having with existing in existence. So you are relating to, to, to what's outside. So he, in this didn't describe once anything about the macro, everything was about the micro and the consciousness, which is fair, like how your brain works and why you thinking things. And I think that's really, really important. And it's the kind of work you do with me and on my one-on-one -on -one calls or the kind of work you can do specifically in therapy for mental health. The work, you wouldn't do mental health with work with me. You do philosophy work with me. Like, why do you think that? Where does that come from? Does it, why do you think humans exist? Why do you have this thought of insecurity? And then if it's more mental health, you go to a therapist because that's different, right? But five would be examining your consciousness outside of every one of these bubbles and recognizing like outside of all of the bubbles, like you're just a floating energy in space and we're all like colliding up against each other. So he didn't talk about that, but I really like um, that he at least covered this part. Um, interesting. You know what I mean? Definitely different from my work in the sense that I didn't like it would have been. I feel like you twos can do this work. Like he kept saying like, this is like the highest level. I don't meet a lot of people who do this. I feel like I meet twos who can do this all the time, right? Because it depends on how they're explaining it. Again, what I find very difficult to find is a human being who zooms out of everything and realizes like they don't even have thoughts. Like you don't even exist, bro. You know what I mean? Like you only exist here when you like in the macro, micro, but you don't even exist in the macro. You're just a m bubble of energy mixed in with everybody else. You know what I mean? Um, Discord says Brittany's levels moving from the micro to the macro, these levels moving from the micro to the micro to a more elaborate micro. Yeah, that's what it felt like. It felt like he was going from micro to micro to micro, but I was like, but what about the macro? And like, that's fine. That's great. That's beautiful. But yeah, I think a lot of people uh, who study themselves and like are interested in how they work can absolutely do this work. So that's interesting. Am I being overly simplistic for thinking that this is just questioning over and over again? Like what, uh, what they do in cognitive therapy? No, I think it overlaps, right? Can you define macro everything outside of the consciousness, like outside of our understanding of our own consciousness? Like there is a thing outside of all of us that exists outside of us. We know on the micro, our understanding of the world because of our consciousness and the relationship I'm having here. I know I'm a thing called woman because you and I have established this term to, to uh, you know, identify this thing we call woman. But on the macro, like we don't even exist in that way. A zoomed out lens of everything outside of our consciousness is just moving balls of energy in the universe. Like I don't exist, but I exist. If you zoom out and you look down on the earth, like no one exists. It's just like, that's a simplified way of explaining it. But like we exist on the micro. So when you zoom in, you're zooming into the consciousness, the thing that qualifies existence. That's why we refer to ourselves to know what's real. Then we refer to others existing in existence. Then we refer back to ourselves to confirm what we've discovered. But when you're talking about the macro, it's so unknowable because you can't exactly interact with it. So when you zoom out into what you assume the macro is in your own micro way, it's basically unknowable. You don't even exist there. Like why would a Brittany exist on the macro? She isn't going to be identified by the macro unless you and your bubble define the macro like a God who identifies as each as an individual consciousness. But I would argue God is a, cons it's a concept by the individual consciousness, right? So it's like, whew. so macro means without concepts. Uh, macro means without knowable concepts. Like we, imagine it this way. Okay. You and I exist and we're in a room together and it's just you and me. Okay. So now I've got a bubble that we've created. You and I have now made a bubble in which you as a consciousness and me as a consciousness are interacting and like maybe creating conflict. It's like, okay, cool. 
And then we are in a room and the room itself could be like a little bubble. And then if you go outside of the room, let's say it's nature and like, oh, nature is like its own little bubble. And we're just going from one environment to another one. Therefore, facilitating a different interaction between the consciousness, right? We're having a different interaction because even our environment itself, its own bubble clashes up against us and creates conflict. Energy hits energy, right? And then if you zoom out, my consciousness is having a relationship with, let's say, like literally the air in the room or the air outside. And then if you zoom out, eventually my consciousness becomes a part of the whole thing rather than a specified thing you can identify. It becomes a part of it altogether. You and I become parts and not just holes. So we're whole on the macro, but on the mic, or sorry, on the micro we're whole, but on the macro we are a part of something. So macro is everything that exists, period. Then we come down to the micro and we form what we call societies. And within societies, there's individuals. And individuals exist within the pressure of the society. They know what they know because the society has informed them of what to know right? But society isn't considering the macro. They're not considering that they are the end-all be-all or not the end-all be-all. The macro knows that we are just little specks of energy floating through the universe, but the society thinks they are the world. They think they are the macro. They think that's all that matters because they don't see outside of that bubble, which is like fair, right? That's how most people think. It's how we've survived as a species. And then the individuals in the society that make up the society are told to act within the society's expectations to keep the society going and alive, thus proving it is objective. But then if you become a specific consciousness, you actually say to yourself, though I'm an individual within society, I'm a woman, I'm Assyrian, I'm queer, I'm all these things society has dubbed me. Also, outside of those things, I'm just a floating ball and the universe, I'm not even myself, you cease to exist. But you always exist on the micro. But on the macro, you are no different than a tree and a rock. Every rock and tree and creature has a life, has a spirit, has a name. Right? We are all a part of the collection, but we are also individuals because we have this relationship with our consciousness. But like we come from the earth, we die and go back to the earth, right? Like we are a part of each other. And that's why when people are like, Brittany, um, whose side are you on on this conflict? Name X conflict. They go as a blank, you should do this. And see how that's society on the macro or my, sorry, mac, micro. But you could also argue it's like a macro of the micro. <laughs> okay, the micro culture says, Brittany, as a this, you should accordingly move this way. And I understand what they're saying because I feel the same way. I feel like sometimes when I see women betray other women in a really awful way, I'm like, what are you doing? You're a woman. But in that moment, they're not actually a part of the society of women. They're actually acting as an individual without in, within that society. And then maybe at that moment, actually, maybe they're acting as an individual part of a different society that isn't the woman's society. Or maybe they're actually evoking their specific consciousness and actually deciding, I actually don't value this and I don't value my sex and I don't think I need to value myself as a woman. It just depends on how they're having the relationship with it. Is it one that's from peace of mind or one from that's like rebellion and resentment? Because if you come to a place of um, knowing the self through resentment, you're not really knowing the self. You're only knowing yourself through the lens of how people see you. But how, what would you be like if you looked at yourself through your, just without yourself, right? Sounds like his levels. It's very similar. And that is about, so that's, so that's yes. But the only thing he didn't mention is the macro. He didn't mention, you know, what about the universe? What about the fact that like none of us matter? What about the fact that like it doesn't matter if someone's homeless or not homeless? It only matters on the micro. Like he made a judgment of the homelessness, but that didn't make sense because homeless people aren't just doing what they want. They're doing what their journey is a part of. And they end up there on the micro sometimes because it's not what they want. So why was he passing judgment? And at the same time, he's passing judgment through his own values, which is valid through his individual scope, right? So I think there's some things here that I'd really like to talk to him about because again, like everything that is of the world is us, it's our action. Like this whole idea of like, oh, I can judge whose war is better or like who is a better person. Yes, you can through your own values. But you can't if you look at us as like, a, you don't judge an asteroid for hitting a planet. You don't judge a bear for killing a fish. 
it's weirdly weird to judge humans on a macro level when we're all just a part of the ecosystem of what is. You can only judge them on the micro through the lens of your values. And I think it's fair to do that, but it wouldn't make sense to judge human beings outside of that because they're, they're only doing what they know to do. That's how most human beings are operating. All of us are just doing what we know to do and we know very little. We just pretend to know a lot. And so there's no judgment there to be had. There's only an understanding through your own values, you know? But it feels, it feels like there's an objective, good or bad. But the objective only exists within the mechanism of your brain that conveys to you that this is objective, which doesn't even exist in the first place because you, you don't have that knowledge. It just feels like you do. And maybe you do on a spectrum. Maybe some people do. But usually the examples people give of objective is not objective. So there is no objective truth? No. I, well, I, I don't know. I believe, well, there's what you could call objective on a micro. Like you could call it objective that I'm a woman. And I would agree with you. Most days. And I could call it objective that I'm a Syrian and I could agree with you. But objective only exists in the micro because race is a construct. And so I'm not a Syrian. I'm just a person. But then what is a person? It's the thing we identified as a person. So even our terminologies are created by us. Humans, before we had language to define things, we just are and were. And the thing that I think there is an objective truth out in the universe, we don't know necessarily, but is there. So like if a fight happens between people, I think there's like an objective truth. Some people manifest this into God. I would just say there is a truth, whether or not something knows it exists doesn't matter, that knows our inner hearts and our inner thoughts and every intention we had. So if there's like an argument between you and a friend, there is a third person who watches it and could have an opinion, but might not have the objective truth. There's you and them who has basically the objective truth, but not the objective truth. And then there's the actual objective truth that's documented by no one or somebody or people, again, they manifest it into God and say, God knows what's true. I think there is an objective truth. I just don't know that anything, anyone has access to that objective truth, right? What does the objective truth orbit? Mm, what do you mean by that? Can you give me another, can you expand on that? You know, I could, I could think of, Maybe there is a possibility that some humans have some version of objective truth in their arsenal and have access to it. I'm not sure. That's like what I'm more interested in right now. Because a lot of people know it. Like they'll say, um, okay, so I clicked my phone a bit ago and I knew it was working. So I could assume it's working now, but I don't know that, right? I would have to actually try to click it on to know that it's working. But some people would be like, oh, I know it's working. Or they'd say, oh, I know this is objectively a phone. I'm like, well, it's a thing we call a phone. So when I think of objective, there's, yes, in the micro sense, we, a culture created this thing. We call it a phone. And therefore, it's a phone. And look, it turned on. So, oh, look, I knew it was going to turn on. But did I know it was going to turn on? Did I assume it was going to turn on? And then there's like outside of this, like what is this? It's nothing. It's a bunch of energy or parts put into a thing and a shape we call a phone. But if you take it all apart, it isn't anything. In the same way, we're nothing when you take us all apart. We're only something because of what we've put together. And that's how powerful humans are. Like we have an, a relationship with that. We can put anything together. And the irony is that what we choose to put together is the world. And you can hate it or love it, but this is what we've done as a collective. As societies, as worlds, this is what we've decided on. It's not bad for an evolved species over time. It's also not always great, but this is what we've created, this world. So every time you see a fight or if there's a miscommunication or you're trying to prove yourself who's right or wrong, there's only a right or wrong in the understanding of the micro disagreement or agreement. And then there's probably a right or wrong that exists outside the ego. Where would it be to say the universe has it so it's a f amorphous and abstract to the point where it is, uh, it is, where it, T has no value. So, oh, T, okay. And if we, sorry, my dyslexia, oh my God, this is so hard. And if it were to approximate the object truth, objective truth, where do you think it would be? Okay, hold on, sorry. Where would it be to say the universe has it? so amorphous and to abstract to the point where it has no T value. It has, 
where T has no value. So if we were to approximate the objective truth, where do you think it would be? Um, I think that's the problem. It has so much value to say that it's amorphous and abstract. To say, I don't know. To say it is beyond comprehension at this moment. And instead of guessing, I'm okay with just not knowing. Why make a bad guess? Like you can guess in a conversation. But I think it is a mistake to make too many guesses and assumptions that lead you down feeling a little too arrogant about knowing the objective truth. To say that it is possibly abstract and unknowing, like unknown because it's unknown to me, is probably just the most truth. The most truth is that I don't know. And I think I don't even have a clue. I think it just is, right? I think it just is. There is objective truth and it just is. And I think you can have a relationship with it by knowing you can't have an exact relationship with it. And I think it's so important. And I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, then I'll just ignore it if it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? You know, why do we need to know? That's so funny, Ingrid. You just pushed that out. You don't, of course. And I guess it's up to the individual consciousness to have a relationship with it. So me as a category of consciousness is fascinated by objective truth and think it's, thinks it's really lovely. But I also am excited that I just don't know. I don't know. And that's so exciting to me because it's, you know, I've lived my whole life being told like, you know better, you know better, you know better. Nope. I don't know better. And it's so much freeing to say like, I don't know, but let's find it, you know, rather than assuming I know it. And when we usually think we know it, know it, we're probably wrong, except in a specific instance, right? Of what we are arguing is objective. Like I said, this is objectively a phone. If on the micro and within the bubble that calls this a phone, we've decided that's what it's called. Therefore making it subjective, right? That's the thing. We are just being beings. God isn't a being per se. Our reality is very base level for most people. Um, all the systems in our bodies are worthless in isolation, but when they come together, they create a functioning human. Pretty awesome. Pretty freaking awesome, bros. Pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. Not for solving problems and produce solutions in this world of macro. Um, if you're looking for objective truth, to help you solve the problems of the world on the micro, I think that's the mistake. That's why I think introspection is an individual relationship you're having with the consciousness. It's not about other people. Because if it was about other people and solving their problems, they would do it on their own. They can't though. And it's not, it's like, uh, just to be clear, I'm not doing my work to like help the world. The world doesn't want it. I'm only here to help individuals who want to go on this journey for themselves. I'm looking for very selfish people that want to be better people and actually like be kinder and more compassionate in the world. But if for, to do that, they have to actually care about themselves enough to care about other people in a real way, right? So that's what I'm looking to do. And just to be clear, I don't know if that's what you meant. I don't want to take you out of context. Um, but yeah, like when we're talking about the macro, it's to free you of worrying about the micro. And to remind yourself that like the micro is you, the consciousness, right? And if the world did that, the world would heal itself, but it can't do that because it's too blinded about helping other people. The road to hell is paved in good intentions after all, you know? But what if some parts of the world want it? Tell me who. Show it to me. Where's your data? Who? Who wants it? When you say parts of the world, you're meaning a society. Which society truly wants to have a relationship with objective truth or with the macro? Which society? I've never seen one. In the history of what I've read about the world, no one doesn't fall prey into going back into the micro bubbles, doesn't fall prey into their ego. I, it's very difficult to find an individual that doesn't have their micro moments let alone a society. So what society is living in the actual present, right? In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. 
And so what's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool.